Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSC English. About me, I am Sandeep Bhushan Tumala and my credentials are I teach international relations and internal security and I have 10 years of teaching experience for civil services. I also teach the analysis of the Hindu newspaper. And my session will definitely help you to crack prelims and mains examinations that is 2020 and 2021 because I would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases from the newspaper from the newspaper which will be useful for you in identifying the analytical and the factual question for the prelims point of view. So definitely my emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases will make you understand or identify the analytical and factual question for prelims point of view and as well as by imbibing the keywords and the key phrases which I would be emphasizing you throughout my lecture will make you or will definitely uh, equip you in regards to your answer writing that is in regards to the mains point of view so definitely for mains point of view answer writing or your answers in mains would be definitely concise and precise minor right because while you are imbibing the keywords and the key phrases your answer is concise and precise wherein you are not drifting away, you are not lengthening the answer but you are very precise and concise. So it is very very imperative to emphasize and to imbibe the keywords and the key phrases in your answer writing that is in regards to the mains examination. So definitely it will be useful for prelims, for analytical factual and in regards to the mains that is in regards to general essay and also in regards to all other papers you will be definitely having a greater advantage by scoring high marks even in the mains in regards to imbibing keywords in the key phrases for 2020 as well as 2021. And there is a notification in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CAC English that is which is uh, India's largest learning platform and once you get subscribed you will have unlimited live and recorded courses from the India's best educators and the privileges you get once you subscribe are, are the daily live classes, live testing quizzes, structured courses and unlimited access to all the live and recorded courses and these are the educators at an academy where you can see it on your screen and in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CS English courses offered or economy, geography, current affairs and all others which you can also see it on your screen and added to that you have the ethics, integrity and aptitude, internal security and social issues also you have it on the screen which are the courses offered by an academy in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CS English and in regards to subscription that is Let's Crack UPSC CS English subscription you have 12 month subscription and 24 month subscription. 12 month subscription, the original price is 44,000. And uh, while you use my code SVT10, that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumal10, you get 10% discount on the original price that is 44,000. And the discounted price would be 39,600 for one year. So you can go ahead with subscribing for 12 months and also you have 24 month subscription, but in the original price is. 64,000. You can subscribe using my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala and wherein you will get 10% discount on the original price that is 64,000 and the discounted price would be 57,600. So try to take the maximum advantage in regards to subscribing for Let's Crack UPSC CS English for 24 months by using my code SBT10 wherein you will get 10% discount by using my code and the original price 64,000 would be 67,600 by, by using my code SBT10 and uh, in regards to today's uh, topic that is analysis of the Hindu newspaper again I would be reiterating my tagline that is emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases which will be certainly useful for prelims as well as mains examinations and before I get into the topic, I would say very good morning to everyone who is uh, alive and also within the live chat. So Sudarshanan, Hemant, Malvika, Rahul, Venkatesh, very good morning to you all. And then I would get into the topic. That is, you have today's topic wherein the Defense Minister Rajnath Singh says that military level talks are positive. So definitely we have seen that uh, on June uh, 5th and June 6th, we had the diplomatic engagement and on June 6th we had the military engagement that is in regards to the lieutenant generals from both the sides did have a talk or meeting in the Chosul Molda, Chosul 
to sul molda region so definitely the uh, defense minister rajna singh said that they have the talks that is the military level talks were positive and china has agreed to continue talks to resolve the border dispute so definitely there is a good news to watch uh, from defense minister rajna singh has said that, that the talks are really positive and it would definitely see to that the china is agreed to resolve the border dispute so this is a dispute since uh, it is happening since may 5th of 2020 so definitely this phase of during uh, across the lac has to be resolved and uh, the uh, defense minister rajna singh has also made a statement saying that it is not in india's character it is not in indian india's character to hurt another country's self-respect nor can it tolerate any attack on its dignity why i'm reading this is you never know this could be part of your question this key phrase or the statement could be your question and ask to what you say comment or justify please do understand it could be the same that is your statement it could be in general essay or even in the other uh, in regards to international relations also it's not in india's character to hurt another country's self-respect nor can it tolerate any attack on its dignity justified this statement so definitely this is very important you can uh, what you say mention it in your answer or in your uh, on your sheet which you are carrying and other has joined himanshu pratap has also joined very good morning to both of you And Mr. Singh has also had discussions or he had consultation with the chief CDS, that is the Chief of Defense Staff, that is General Bipin Rawat, and also the three services together he had a discussion. So, in regards to the consultation, the Defense Minister Rajnath Singh is having uh, or holding a regular consultation with the Chief of Defense Staff, that is General Bipin Rawat, is the Chief of Defense Staff, and also with the three services, and especially focusing on the Army Chief also he is part of the entire discussion or the uh, defense minister is holding a regular consultation with Bipin Rawat that is chief of defense staff and then with the army chief general that is Manoj Nar Narawani, Narawani. So definitely this is uh, a, a positive note that there is lot of discussions which are taking place and also Rajnath Singh uh, defense minister makes it very clear that the talks are positive. And the other news is that high court asked Manipur Speaker to keep seven Congress MLAs outside. So definitely this is again in regards to the quality point of view, quality for Prince point of view. This is very very important. And this was in news also earlier. I mean not the same news, but the earlier news. I will also explain that. So definitely which is in regards to the Manipur Assembly itself. There was news. There was. I mean this was in the news, but again now it is in regards to the where in the uh, Manipur High Court as directed the Speaker of the Manipur Assembly. Manipur Assembly Speaker that is Humnam Kemchand, Humnam Kemchand to restrain seven Congress MLAs who have defected to BJP from entering into the Assembly. That means uh, they have actually in 2018 they have won all the seven MLAs that is they have won on the Congress ticket and they have defected the party and then they have joined the BJP. So uh, the Speaker has kept the defection or else in regards to the disqualification he has kept it at bay that is to himself at his at his discretion and then the Manipur High Court because a petition is filed in the Manipur High Court so the Manipur High Court has directed please do understand your word here your word directed the speaker so here again in regards to you will have the points what you need to look at from prelims point is the speaker the role of the speaker or the power of the speaker and then the defected anti-defection law anti-defection law so definitely you have to consider this you have to consider this the role of the speaker or the powers of the speaker and then anti-defection law and the high court and the high court interfering and the high court interfering in the what do you say uh, the speaker's authority or the discretionary power high court interfering in the speaker's or speaker's discretionary power because uh, disqualifying an ML, mla or legislative under the anti-defection law he is the discretionary power of the speaker so definitely the three points you need to take it into consideration for prelims exclusively prelims point of view is that you need to keep in mind the speaker the role of the speaker so definitely you need to again what you say make it in your paper in your what you say uh, notebook or in your 
whatever paper you are carrying, the speaker. You keep it in point. The role of the speaker or the power of the speaker. Again, considering the articles. Again, considering the various articles which are involved. So definitely, for French point of view, the speaker's role, articles involved in it. Anti, uh, what is the Indian Constitution articles enshrined for the speaker's role and the power, and also anti-defection law. Again, article which schedule it is fine again high court interfering into the discretionary powers of the speaker so again here we have very good what do you say uh, prelims question for the uh, polity question for the prelims point of view and then several mls who have been actually what do you say defected uh, they have uh, defected uh, to bjp are the this one and then justice k nobin singh has ordered that they are restrained from entering the manipur assembly so definitely the uh, speak, uh, Manipur High Court, the Justice K. Nobin Singh has directed the speaker to restrain them. That is, they should not enter, they should not enter into the Manipur Assembly itself. So definitely why this uh, uh, drastic step has been taken or else why the interference by the High Court into the, into, uh, into the, uh, uh, the discretionary powers of the speaker is to be noted here, to be noted here. And then it says that the petition has filed the case earlier also and uh, uh, they have disposed of finally by the speaker so definitely until unless the petition are disposed of finally by the speaker so definitely it is now the duty bond by the speaker to admit or to follow the directions by the manipur high court in regards to the de uh, defection that is the in regards to the disqualification of the seven congress mls seven congress mls so please do consider this role of role and speaker of the uh, role and uh, role and power of the speaker and uh, according to the article and then anti defection law and then uh, the disqualification of the mls by the speaker and high court interference in the speaker's discretionary power speaker's discretionary power and the court has also directed the speaker to ensure the compliance of the order so definitely now the uh, speaker is bound to be uh, following or complying to the order of the Manipur High Court and the speaker uh, earlier this uh, the court also has said that the speaker has not disposed so that means the Manipur High Court has also given a statement or else ordered the speaker to take up the actions against the uh, seven MLS earlier also but the speaker had not disposed of the petitions despite the petitions having been filed November 8, 2018 so definitely last year itself I mean two years back itself almost one and a half year itself back there were petitions filed against the uh, defected mls that the speaker should take the action but the speaker hasn't taken the action that is what the court also makes it very clear and the court also has what do you say come up with the uh, argument that there was a similar disqualification petition filed by the manipur congress mla to the supreme court so here it is in the supreme court please do understand the earlier case was in regards to the supreme court giving directions to the giving directions to the uh, speaker of the Manipur assembly and now it is the Manipur high court giving directions to the speaker of the Manipur assembly and here in this case the Manipur high court is giving the seven MLS should not enter into the or should be restricted from entering into the Manipur as assembly and then the earlier the supreme court has given a direction or uh, to the speaker of the Manipur assembly saying that the minister that is Sham Kumar has to be banned in entering into the assembly. So definitely the Supreme Court has given a direction to the speaker that the minister should be banned and he should not be entered into the Manipur assembly. And this was what you said later. I mean the speaker has later qualified, disqualified him as a member of the uh, assembly high court. So as a, a member of the assembly that is Manipur assembly. So definitely this is a kind of sense that there is lot of disqualification happening or anti-defection happening but the speakers are not really taking into, into consideration and it is being taken up as per the discretion of the, the speakers. Uh, speakers. That is in the, we, we have seen that it has happened in the various assemblies. So what is very very important is for the prelims point of view the discretionary powers of the speaker in regards to disqualifying and legislative when that uh, anti-defection is happening from one political party to various or other political party or else the ruling political party so here please do consider that the role the uh, powers of the speaker and its article anti-defection law and the uh, verdicts given by the um, uh, manipur high court and the supreme court earlier also the minister here it is minister and here in the manipur high court it is the mls please do understand there is a difference mls 7 mls should not be entered into the assembly that is what manipur high court says and the supreme court has said that 
the minister should not should be banned from entering into the assembly so definitely supreme court has given a uh, direction to the speaker of the manipur speaker of the manipur so here please do consider uh, for a better in regards to if at all there is a uh, question given uh, the speaker which among the following is a speaker of the manipur high court um, umnam kemchand is the speaker of the manipur assembly umnam kemchand so definitely take it is uh, take this news as i have said uh, the keywords i would be emphasizing so definitely speaker anti defection law high court interfering into the uh, internal or else the discretionary powers of the speaker and again here supreme court has also gone it so please do understand please do take it into consideration which is the article article 142 article 142 which is the article through which the supreme court has interfered into the inter, uh, into the discretionary powers of the speaker please do take it into consideration the article 142 and then we have another news wherein it says the lieutenant governor of delhi government order to restrict the uh, overrules the uh, lieutenant governor overrules the delhi government so again there is a uh, jung between i mean there is a fight between the lieutenant governor and the cm so we have been experiencing this almost 2016 or so so definitely there is another news wherein the delhi chief minister has come up saying that he he wanted to go ahead with Uh, restricting the non locals uh, or only delhiites to have the uh, treatment in the hospitals or in the private hospital so definitely that has been overruled by the lieutenant Go lieutenant Gen governor of delhi that is anil baijal anil baijal is the lieutenant governor of delhi and he has gone ahead with reassessing the capital strategy capital strategy in the sense here it is the delhi government that is the cm delhi government that is team has uh, taken the decision and then the in regards to covid 19 treatment so definitely now the lieutenant governor has overturned two significant orders issued by the government so what are the two significant uh, orders issued by the government so it is uh, he had gone ahead with the meeting so uh, the meeting of the delhi disaster management authority so the meeting which was held uh, for in regards to the delhi disaster management authority headed by the lieutenant governor has gone ahead with restricting wherein the delhi government has gone ahead with a statement saying that restricting the treatment for both private and state run hospitals to only the citizens to only the citizens bearing the proof of residence in delhi so definitely the one who are delhi uh, delhiites or the res, uh, residents of delhi would only get the uh, treatment both in private and the state run city hospital that is what the decision taken by the order order by the delhi government but the lieutenant governor at the meeting of the delhi disaster management authority where he heads or he is the chairperson of the delhi disaster management authority please do take it into consideration this refresh which is very very important because who is the chairperson who is the chairperson here here it is headed by the lieutenant governor not the cm not the cm here in this case in the at the what do you say in the De delhi case it is the lieutenant governor and then this has been definitely overruled that means not only the one who are the delhiites or the citizens or the proof who has a proof of the residence of delhi will not get or will not be will not be only the one who will get the treatment in the private and state run but everyone who are staying there will be will be getting the treatment that is what the overruled by the lieutenant governor and lieutenant governor has also directed the icmr guidelines icmr guidelines regarding the testing of contacts of covid-19 patients to be followed without any deviation so definitely the, uh, the lieutenant governor has taken into control the entire situation that is not only the uh, delhiites will get the treatment but also everyone will be getting the uh, treatment which was actually the directions made by the delhi government but, and the other one is he has directed the icmr guidelines in regards to testing without any deviation so definitely there is a point that the lieutenant governor and then the uh, delhi cm is having uh, at a uh, head on head in regards to the various strategies which are going ahead to tackle the covid-19 in delhi and there is one more news which talks about center six district level plans please do understand this is very very important for prelims point of view and also we can uh, get, take this as one of the uh, statement for mains also how i will tell you 
because it is asking center is seeking district level plan so you can take it into consideration center having in collaboration or working in collaborations with the states especially the district level authorities or the local level local level or local uh, local governments local government so definitely you have this center state or federal structure which is intact we can you can uh, put it whenever there is a question in regards to the federal structure itself or federalism itself federal structure or federalism you can take this as an example and you can quote this because it is directly the union health ministry has directed the district wise prospective plans for the coming months to tackle so yes asking the district wise prospective plans so this is very very important and can take this as a what is the keywords district wise prospective plans why to tackle the covid 19 and definitely the home secretary has the discussion or he has held a review meeting with the district collectors municipal collection uh, commissioners chief medical officers superintendents of district hospitals and also the principals of medical colleges so definitely this is a very good sign in regards to the center state relations or the uh, federal structure or federalism itself so definitely the health ministry the health secretary has gone ahead with uh, uh, district collectors municipal commissioners chief medical officers and also in regards superintendents of the district hospitals and the principals of medical colleges so definitely from various 45 municipalities and uh, uh, corporations all across the 38 districts to understand 38 districts and then 10 states which is uh, what do you say it is covering the 38 districts why because all these 38 districts which are in 10 states are the one which we see that the uh, spike in the covid 19 cases is taking up and these states are maharashtra telangana tamil nadu rajasthan haryana gujarat jammu and kashmir And then Karnataka you have and Uttar, Uttarakhand and Madhya Pradesh. So these are the 10 states wherein they have participated and then they are definitely the Union Health Ministry is wanting or it is requesting the uh, district level plan that is district wise prospective plan. Please do take it into consideration this key phrase because you can use it in your directly you can use it in your answer means answer writing district wise prospective plans district wise prospective plans and 38 districts ranging across 10 states are the one which are the badly hit so this is again in regards to the center state relations quality wise again and then the here which is very very important this this you can directly what you say take this entire statement in your means when it is in regards to the federal structure as i said or federalism itself or center state relations center state relations also you can quote this 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 entire what is statement the health minister has directed the state officials to initiate measures so it is in regards to the district wise prospective plans so what prospective plans what are the measures so definitely it wanted the measures to be taken up by the what do you say district or state officials coordinating with the district district levels that is one is the containment zones for the case management so definitely the measures are in regards to containment zones for case management case management so this is the one the measures which have been taken up or which are part of the district wise prospective plans and the other one is the buffer zone buffer zone surveillance activities and the third one is promotion of please do understand these measures are very very important while you are writing or you can put it directly in your mains because it is directly from the health ministry minister itself health minister and the promotion of covid 19 appropriate behavior please do understand these are very very important measures you can directly put it in your answer i am saying it very clear and this could be part of your what is a prelims which among the following statements are the measures which have been uh, directed by the or initiated measures directed by the health minister to the state officials so in containment zone for case management first one is the case management the measures second one is in regards to the buffer zone surveillance activities and the third one is in regards to the promotion of covid 19 appropriate behavior please do understand this appropriate behavior so the behavior is very very important what behavior has to be taken into consideration is very very important and health ministry has also said that there has to be house to house survey 
house to house survey that is in regards to the buffer zone surveillance activity house to house survey has to be done and then there has to be a survey teams efficient ambulance management efficient tire raging carrying tire raging in the sense decide the order of treatment so what is the priority which is the priority at that particular time depending upon the priority that decision has to be taken in regards to the treatment and then also in regards to the bed management this is very important again the bed management when we are talking about the bed management that is in regards to the triaging triaging in the sense decide the order of treatment priority of the treatment is very important and then madhu has john siddhartan has john very good morning to both of you and uh, there is one more news which talks about new zealand is free from covid 19 so definitely we have seen that the country which is first which has declared that it has lifted all the social and economic restrictions all the social and economic restrictions but except border controls are still into place still into place and it says that it is free of covid 19 and it is the first one of the first countries in the world to return to pre pandemic normality and this is again very important uh, keyword pre pandemic normality important key phrase you can take it into consideration pre pandemic normality has come to normal which new zealand and then new zealand prime minister jacinda ardern has said that while the job is not done there is no denying this is a milestone so definitely uh, the prime minister of new zealand jacinda ardern has making is making it very clear that this is a milestone and then she is thanking all the new zealand all the citizens that they have been successfully made sure that there was no new case for entire 17 days and the new new zealand has reported 1154 infections and 22 deaths since what do you say the virus which has been uh, uh, affected new zealand that is late february so from february till now only 1154 infections and 22 deaths and since almost 17 days there are no new cases no new cases in new zealand and that is why they have gone ahead with making sure that it is they have lifted the social and economic restrictions restrictions and the the new zealand prime minister is jacinda ardern and the return to pre pandemic normality is very important keyword and intra afghan talks to begin soon so definitely there there is a news in regards to the afghan that is when we look at afghanistan the news is actually in regards to the uh, Taliban US peace deal will i mean just the Taliban US peace deal which has taken up in the month of february has actually made sure that there would be release of prisoners a uh, release of prisoners uh, from the talibans and release of uh, talibans from the afghanistan government so, so there would be mutual uh, swapping of the prisoners which will take place as per the Taliban US peace deal and definitely there was a sense that uh, Uh, the the uh, afghanistan government was not stable earlier afghanistan government was not stable because ashraf ghani ashraf ghani has won the elections which was declared by the afghanistan government election commission afghanistan government election commission has declared that afghan ashraf ghani is uh, elected president is elected president because there was presidential elections uh, last september september 2019 september 2019 there were elections in afghanistan and the afghanistan gone afghanistan election commission has declared the ashraf uh, declared ashraf ghani as the elected president since then this person is abdullah abdullah this person is abdullah abdullah so abdullah abdullah was not really a, a in favor of the election commission's declaration that uh, ashraf ghani was elected as the president of afghanistan so this person is the one who is the opposition party and he has also gone ahead with having a bitter relations with ashraf ghani but recently we have seen that ashraf ghani and abdullah abdullah have uh, come to terms come to terms and then they have resolved the issue and they have formed the unity government they have formed the unity government they have formed the unity government in afghanistan so the issue in regards to the instability of the afghanistan government is resolved as of now and then there is a what do you say unity government in uh, afghanistan by ashraf ghani and abdullah abdullah please do understand ashraf ghani and abdullah abdullah both have come together and they have resolved the issue and then they have come up with 
forming the government that is the unity government in afghanistan so before i get into the today's topic this is what i have given the background so who is abdul abdullah you need to know because he is the one who has been appointed chief of the high council this is very important high council for national reconciliation so high council for national reconciliation that is for afghanistan national afghanistan reconciliation so as there was what you said the unity government which has come so abdullah abdullah was appointed as the chief of the high council for national reconciliation and he is the one who is actually having talks we would have the talks with the taliban so that there would be an uh, situation or a truce or a agreement which would come up that there would be not much of attack by the talibans and then there would be uh, afghanistan government would definitely get into the mode of actual control of the afghanistan itself so definitely the abdullah abdullah is taking up the cause or preparing the first round of intra afghanistan talks with the taliban so this is very very important abdullah abdullah is the one who has also fought the elections for the uh, afghanistan presidential elections uh, in september 2019 and after a due course of uh, talks both that both the of them have come together and now they have formed the government unity government and he has been appointed as the chief of the high council for national reconciliation and the talks will be expected in qatar and then later on even uh, probably germany would also host the next future rounds of the high council for national reconciliation high council for national reconciliation who is the chief of it it is the abdullah abdullah and the intra afghan dialogue you take into this uh, the key phrase intra afghan dialogue the intra afghan dialogue which is now headed by the chief of i council for national reconciliation that is abdul abdullah he is also having or he says that they we will see more calls for the narendra modi government to engage in taliban so definitely we have seen us and also us special representative for uh, afghanistan reconciliation khalil zad has also made a made a point to india to the external affairs minister and to the indian government prime minister also that india take initiative in trying to uh, talk with the Taliban to resolve or to make sure that there is stability in the Afghanistan please do understand the US and the US special representative to US that is Donald Trump as well as Donald Trump and also the US special representative for Afghanistan reconciliation that is Mr Khalil Zia Khalil Zad has made a point that Afghan uh, Indian government that this Prime Minister Narendra Modi or external affairs ministers also should get into the mode that they have discussions direct discussions with the taliban but india has uh, initially uh, declined it saying that we will not talk with the terrorist groups but rather we will talk only with the elected government of afghanistan so thereby india was uh, reluctant in uh, having direct talks with the taliban but definitely now the intra afghan dialogue is also expecting that there would be more calls made to the narendra modi government that is the indian government in regards to engaging directly with the taliban so that there would be a, a, a solution which will be brought between the taliban and then the afghan government so that there would be peace restored in afghanistan in afghanistan and not only mr khalil zad and also the uh, russian special envoy for afghanistan that is zamir kabulov has also time and again very clearly said that or they felt that it is now time for india to give up its opposition to talks to taliban so definitely khalil zad and also russian special envoy for afghanistan zamir kabulov is also making very clear that it is now necessary for the government of india to uh, shred its uh, uh, mindset that it will not talk to the opposition that is to the taliban it it, it 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 has to shred it and then why it is saying that because there would be some kind of the terrorist group would have some kind of affiliations to the pakistan so that is what the notion and then uh, the us special representative for afghan Re uh, reconciliation khalil zad mr khalil zad and also russian special envoy for afghanistan zamir kabulov uh, is also making a statement or they have also felt it in the past that the uh, government of india should come forward in making sure that they engage with the directly with the talibans directly with the talibans and sharang dawre has also joined very good morning sharang and then there is another news in regards to the economy to contract the 3.2 in financial year 2021 which is by wb that is west uh, world bank so what is very very important again this we are taking in regards to the economy economy point of view for prelims 
and this when we are talking into it that is the growth prospects definitely the economy world economy or indian economy or uh, developing countries economy developed economies so uh, uh, underdeveloped economies are the one which have been uh, time and again we have seen in the recent past after the covid 19 uh, pandemic breakout we have seen that uh, from various organization we have seen from imf we have seen from wb we have seen from oecd so what is very important is you need to definitely focus for prelims point of view the report given by the IMF in regards to the Indian uh, eco uh, uh, economy or the growth prospects and the WB and the OECD not only India but also in regards to India and global economy India and global economy they have come up with the report so what is important is please do take it into consideration the IMF, WB, OECD or, uh, or else even in regards to the Asian Development Bank, right? Or if it is possible, you also take into consideration the Confederation of Indian Industries. The Confederation of Indian Industries, which I have also come up with the uh, reports in regards to the Indian economy or the prospects, Indian economy because of the COVID-19 pandemic and also the global economy. So do take it into consideration for Lynch point of view. Not only this, we are we are talk, I mean the news is in regards to only WB that is World Bank has come up. But my request is humble request is for the examination UPSC point of view. Do consider IMF report, WB report, OECD, ADB, CII also. And then uh, the World Bank has come up with the global economic prospects. So again, focusing on the key phrase that is global economic prospects. Again, you need to very clearly take it into consideration for prelims point of view. So the global economic prospect June 2020 has come up with the report and then it has very clearly said that Indian economy is expected to contract squeeze 3.2 percentage in this financial year that is 2021. And then it is also very clear, and clear that it will again the growth is forecast of 3.1 percentage next year. So now it is contracted by by please do understand contracted by 3.2 percentage and the growth will forecast at 3.51 percentage next year so that is 2021 and 2022 it will be 3.1 percentage now it is contracted by 3.2 percentage so definitely from 6 to uh, almost 3.2 it has come down and the world economy is in deepest recession because of the covid 19 pandemic since uh, the kind of deepest recession economic recession the world economy is facing is the last time which has failed, faced is was at uh, uh, the time of the World War II and it has con it has focused that is global economic prospects of the WB. The report of GEP has forecasted the contracts contraction of the world economy of 5.2 percentage and there are almost 60 million people who have been pushed into extreme poverty that is been told by the World Bank Group President David Malpass. So David Malpass again for who is the President for the prelims point of view to do take it into consideration. The World Bank President even if it is changing you do consider it. That is the David Malpass and Mary very clearly said that that was in the last week he has said that it is around 60 million people who are pushed under poverty, poverty because of the the deepest economic uh, recession which has been uh, experiencing because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But if you look at what is the latest report, this is last week. But if you look at the latest report, it could be 70 to 100 millions, 70 to 100 millions of people who have been pushed uh, into extreme poverty as per the World Bank President David Malpa. So definitely the uh, global economy is shrinking, is contracting definitely because of the uh, deepest economic recessions which the world has experienced post World War II and this is the uh, global economic prospects report which has been come up on for the month of June 2020. So this please do take it into consideration that is world would be contracting 5.2 percentage India by 3.2 please do consider this world 5.2 and India 3.2 and next year it will be 3.1 percentage and emerging economies and developing economies again this is very very important key phrase emerging uh, market and developing economies emerging markets and developing economies are expected to contract by 2.5 percentage so what is important for you for Clint's point of view is from the 
WB giving report that is global economic prospects world by 5.2 percentage it will contract India by 3.2 percentage it will contract and then EMDE that is the emerging market and developing economies altogether 2.5 percentage it will contract and the economy and the economic activity in the advanced economies is to shrink uh, by 7 percentage to shrink by 7 percentage so this this data is again very important which is been by the world bank in world bank in its report that is global economic prospect please do consider this key phrase global economic prospects you never know upsc will pose a question based on the global economic prospect too by the wb and there is definitely because of the COVID-19 we have seen the supply and demand, finance and trade have been disrupted mostly in regards to the global trade, tourism and extra external financing and, and commodity exports. So definitely the supply and demand has been badly hit, the finance and trade has been also disrupted, global trade has been disrupted, tourism has been disrupted and also the external financing, external financing that is the other countries or else IMF, WB, Asian Development Banks or else the developed economies financing the uh, developing economies or the underdeveloped economies or, or else uh, the developed economies financing the low and middle income groups in the uh, world and the commodity exports are all very badly hit that is again I reiterate my statement supply and demand finance and trade global trade tourism and then in regards to the external financing and then also the commodity export have been badly hit because of the COVID-19 and because of all this and the reasons why this is happening is all this is happening is because of the reasons what I have said and these are the reasons. The 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are the reasons. Supply, demand, finance and trade this uh, global, uh, global trade tourism external financing commodity exports have been badly hit or they are hit very badly that is why it has come down and the global growth is set to rebound at 4.2 percentage in 2021 rebound that is it will again surge in 2021 that is next year so emde growing at 4.6 percentage so here this is all this fiscal year that is 2020 21 and then for 2021 2022 the Global growth will increase to 4. Point, uh, will uh, set to rebound at 4. Point. Now it is shrunk. All these have been shrunk. Please do understand this is not what it is. Shrunk by 5.2, shrunk by 3.2, shrunk by 2.5 percentage, by, uh, shrunk by uh, advanced economy 7 percentage. But in 2021 it will be 4.2 and then EMD, EMDE that is emerging market and developing economies will be at 4.6 percentage and advanced economies will be at 3.9 percentage and then India 3.1 percentage because it is given I have told you 3.1 percentage this is the growth it will increase so this is this data please do take it into consideration this data what I have written here please do take it into consideration you can make a note or if you are uh, in a position to what do you say uh, keep it in mind your wish your comfortable levels and India's growth is expect, expected to slow down at 4.2 percentage in the year 2019-20 we have seen that and because of that uh, the contracted we have seen that 2020-21 is it has contracted by 3.2 percentage and by 21-22 uh, it will be by 3.1 percentage so definitely this is the entire global prospect global economic perspective uh, which has been report released by the WB World Bank so my humble request is please do consider into IMF report, WB report, OECD, ADP and then Confederation, Confederation of Indian Industry in regards to the Indian economy and global economy which will be very very important because it's not that you, you have to focus on the World Bank that which is in today's newspaper. No, what is very important is that you need to, you need to again get into the mode of that how there could be a possibility of framing questions by the UPSC. So definitely IMF, WB, Asian Development Bank and also in regards to the CII, you need to definitely get into the mode of how they have forecasted and what was 
they have said what they have said and in regards to global economic prospects please do take it into consideration and i hope this session was very very important because i have focused on various aspects that is polity economy and also in regards to the health ministry when i was talking science and technology and international relations in regards to the afghanistan in regards to new, new zealand international current affairs and also in regards to the the uh, defense minister when we are talking about that is again in regards to india and the other countries where in, how india is going ahead with uh, planning with the uh, military engagement and then the diplomatic engagement so i have covered from various uh, angles in regards to how best we can try to my session will definitely help you in regards to scoring good marks in prelims as well as mains so by emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases i made it very clear that how it, my session will be important in regards to prelims and mains also so please do before you sign up please do like the video share the video and subscribe to let's crack upsc csc english for 24 months and also for 12 and 24 months for 12 and 24 months please do subscribe and then while subscribing you use my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala where you will get 10% discount on the original price of uh, 12 months or 24 months and if you have down if you haven't downloaded the Unacademy uh, Learners app please to download the Unacademy Learners app and be part of the Unacademy special classes wherein you can have access to all the courses by various educators by various educators and then uh, you can also have access to UPSC CAC English in 10 minutes and the telegram link is let's crack UPSC CAC English oh IMF IMF is International Monetary Fund IMF is International Monetary Fund so that is what I'm saying you also try to look at do some homework also. I said IMF, WB, ADB is Asian Development Bank. So please do do some homework also, Sharang. That is a homework for you, Sharang Dware. <laughs> and then I would say thank you and all the best for your preparation. And you can also connect uh, to me that is through my telegram link. That is the t.me slash Sandeep Bhushan SBT. I repeat. My telegram link is t.me slash Sandeep Bhushan SBT and my uh, what you say next session would be at 10 15 a.m. In regards to the analysis of the uh, uh, analysis of the trending editorials and articles. So 10 15 a.m. We will have the next session and I would say uh, thank you to all and thank you and all the best. Thank you and all the best for your examinations. And thanks to Sudarshanam, Hemant, Malvika, Rahul, Venkatesh, Adarsh, Manshu, Madhu, Siddharthan, Sharan Dware. Everyone, uh, I mean, thank you and all the best for your examination. And then you can also, uh, any doubts, you can also message me on my WhatsApp number. That is 929200 and see you at again 10 15 a.m. which I will be taking up in regards to the analysis of the training editorials and article. Thank you, thank you very much. All the best. And do not forget while you are you subscribing for 12 or 24 months, do not forget to use my code SBT10 Sandeep Bhushan Tumala 10. Thank you, all the best, and see you at 10 15 a.m.